The series opens with a pregnant woman running away from the devil, holding Thor's hammer. Suddenly, the baby's hand emerges from her belly, causing her to panic and attempt to give the baby a taste of the hammer. But soon, the baby is normally born, and it is a girl. Thirteen years later, the girl is known as Chrissy, and her mother Laura is on the way to bring her daughter to her new school as they have just moved to the new place. After Chrissy arrives at school, she meets a boy named Bennigan and befriends him. As there is a party tonight, Bennigan invites her to join him, and she agrees. But but suddenly, Chrissy's belly begins to hurt, and she quickly rushes to the bathroom. She thought this happened because of the cheese she ate last night. Later, she realizes that it is actually her period and immediately starts to get nervous. At the same time, Bennigan is also dragged into the bathroom by two bullies who attempt to slash his flesh and live stream it to the world. Suddenly, a drop of Chrissy's period falls into the toilet and appears as a demon face. However, the bullies find out that Chrissy is in the bathroom and also attempt to broadcast Chrissy with her period to the world. Surprisingly, Chrissy is possessed by the demon, leading her to have the most deadly power in the universe and exploding the bullies alive using only her mind. She then creates a black hole that sucks everything in, just like your girlfriend sucks your d Nonetheless, Chrissy doesn't realize what she has done, and soon Laura comes to get her, ordering Chrissy to solve her hair and burn the photo of herself. Since Chrissy was born, her mother never told her anything, so on this day, Laura decides to reveal that her dad is the devil, also known as Satan, and Laura is his mortal conduit to Earth. According to Bible Y types, Chrissy is an antichrist. As Chrissy got her period and created the black hole in the sky, now her dad will know where to find her, so Laura has to get her far away from her dad. Somewhere else, the man known as the unshaven man sees the news about the black hole and arranges his team to be ready to murder Chrissy to stop Satan's cruel plan. However, Chrissy couldn't believe her mother had slept with the devil, but who wouldn't? He might last 45 minutes on the first round. They both then start getting into an argument, and Laura handcuffs Chrissy to the pole in the bathroom, preventing her from reaching Satan. Suddenly, the demons of Satan show up to take Chrissy to meet her father, but first, she must agree to see him. However, she agrees only if she gets a ride to a party with Bennigan, and the demon says this is not a problem. They then open the portal for Chrissy, and at that moment, Laura arrives to see her daughter being kidnapped by the demons. She begins to use her pistol and manages to get rid of one of the demons, but unfortunately, her daughter is gone, and the portal closes along with the black hole. As Chrissy arrives in hell, her father suddenly appears with a 90s gang boy appearance. He is surprised to see that the future heir is a female. However, he changes to his own appearance and congratulates Chrissy for killing people for the first time ever in her life. Satan brings her here because together they can create a future without rules where they can live the life they want. He also reveals that Chrissy was stolen and he couldn't find her all these years until she came into his power, and that's because of the cosmic laws. Later, it is revealed this place is not hell but is known as the metaphysical realm. Back on Earth, Laura shows herself with a jack body like Brock Lesnar's and badass tattoos. She then places skeleton bones into a protection and swallows it to keep them inside. Later, she chants a spell to enter the metaphysical realm and retrieve her daughter, asking her neighbor to watch her body while she is gone. Upon arriving in the realm, she spits out the protection and assembles the skeleton bones into a pistol, immediately shooting and killing a riding demon. She then pours poison into a creature to possess it and commands it to hunt the demons. Satan brings Chrissy to introduce her to everyone at the bar and turns the demons into a carriage to send Chrissy to the party, as he promised. He toasts before she goes for their future and to consenting his sire and seed, but Chrissy refuses, calling him lame as he attempts to trap her in his binding agreement. But it is not lame at all, he says. Instead, it's called Maximus Donus, which means an apocalyptic event where he would combine every dimension with the demon realm so he could rule over. At once, Laura breaks into the bar to confront Satan and smashes all the demons who have the balls to fight her. She then gets into a brawl with Satan, and as she knocks him down, she takes a spear attempting to cut his hot dog out. But fortunately, Satan uses his power to control her in time. As Chrissy sees her parents going insane, she gets into the carriage and rides off to the party. When she arrives, Ben Bennigan thanks her for saving him from the bullies, and they both start getting to know each other more. Not long after, Unshaven Man also arrives with his team to take Chrissy's life. Back in the metaphysical realm, the snake informs Satan that someone wants to murder his daughter. They are forced to pause their brawl and return to Earth to save Chrissy. As the men approach Chrissy, she uses her power to burn each one of them. However, the men possess items that can weaken Chrissy, and soon the Unshaven Man begins chanting a spell before attempting to kill her. Just as he is about to stab Chrissy, suddenly one of
one of his teen shoots him in the balls, revealing that Satan has possessed her. Later, Satan possesses each of them, causing them to shoot off their own balls and ending their lives immediately. The unshaven man quickly escapes, vowing to seek revenge against Satan when he has the chance. However, Chrissy bursts in anger, furious that her parents always get into arguments. Satan then returns to his realm and is surprised to see that his wife is stronger than he thought. But it doesn't matter to him, as he believes that he will soon rule over every dimension once his daughter joins him. Later that night, a priest clears out Satan's possession from a boy's body. Soon, Satan decides to leave and return to being a locust. However, he shows Chrissy how to possess a human body, and it's now her turn. As she starts to concentrate, her soul exits her body and enters the boy once again to practice her possession. Surprisingly, Satan is amazed to see Chrissy mimic a human voice on her first try, a feat that takes demons years to master. They then return to the metaphysical realm and send Chrissy back to Earth. Satan assumes that if his daughter, Chrissy, has a few more visits, she will eventually beg Laura to live with him, and he will regain his position of power. Back on Earth, Chrissy possesses a mailman, forcing him to fart. Upon seeing this, Laura yells at her to come back home and have lunch. However, Laura thinks if Chrissy keeps doing this, the evil DNA she possesses will spread within her, and the normal life she said she wanted will be gone. Laura wants Chrissy to be more conscious of her choices, or to use her power to do good rather than messing around with others. While at school, Chrissy goes into everyone's bodies for her fun, but Bennigan encourages her. If she possesses people for moral reasons, like helping them make better choices, it would be great. At the same time, one of the students gets into an argument with a chief, leading them to attempt to end each other's lives. But when Bennigan sees this as a chance, he lets Chrissy show what she is capable of. Chrissy then begins to possess them and creates a great relationship between the two, preventing any violence from happening. In the metaphysical realm, Satan is approached by Asmodeus, who used to work for him, to possess hundreds of people. Asmodeus is here to make good on their deal, which states that once the Antichrist arrives, Asmodeus would be at the helm of Maximus Donus with Satan in exchange for everything in Asmodeus's name. However, Satan remembers that the contract isn't real, he just made it up, and Asmodeus's lawyer is also created by Satan. Upon realizing this, Asmodeus bursts in anger and vows to take revenge on Satan in the future. Chrissy is now using her power to help people in the community, but when she leaves her body alone at school, suddenly Asmodeus shows up and begins to possess her body. Later, Laura comes to get Chrissy from school and apologizes for being harsh before. However, Chrissy accepts her apology and moves on, which she never does, and Laura suspects something is wrong with her daughter. Upon arriving home, Laura tells a snake that Chrissy is possessed by the demon, and she believes it is Satan's fault. She orders the snake to inform Satan that he has lost invitation rights to everything, but her katana is still available. Laura then prepares a soul stain, which is capable of knocking a soul out of bodies, and she hands a jar over to her neighbor, Darlene, to trap a soul once it is out. Later, Chrissy approaches Laura, asking her to take her to the place she wants to go for her Earth History Project. Laura agrees, but before they go, Chrissy insists on putting her head into a bucket of water for 30 seconds, as this is what human girls do before a road trip. As Chrissy bows down to perform this ritual, Laura and Darlene prepare to make their move. However, their plan is interrupted when Bennigan arrives to meet Chrissy. When Laura knocks Asmodeus's soul out, it suddenly goes into Darlene's body. Nevertheless, Laura uses her magic to pin down Darlene's hands, leaving Asmodeus with nowhere to run. Currently, Darlene's soul resides in Bennigan's body, and Bennigan's soul is in Chrissy's body. Back to Chrissy's soul, when she sees everyone upset with the new mayor just because he doesn't answer their questions, she decides to enter the mayor's body and solve this problem. However, it doesn't go as she thought, causing people to become even more furious and attempt to beat the mayor. As Chrissy gets scared, she accidentally splits her soul into small pieces to possess people. Later, Laura arrives at the scene and wonders why her daughter's soul is in everybody. As Modius explains it is soul mitosis, Chrissy's soul has become overexerted from splitting into many bodies, causing her to lose control. He warns that soon her soul will be spread so thin she will be lost forever. Suddenly, Satan arrives and knocks out Bennigan's soul from Chrissy's body upon learning of his daughter's danger. This causes Bennigan and Laura's souls to swap bodies. In response, Satan unleashes another spell, returning Laura's soul to her own body but swapping Asmodeus's soul into Chrissy's body, allowing him to escape. However, Laura orders Satan to go after Asmodeus while she tries to reunite Chrissy's scattered soul. Later, Chrissy's soul loses control over the bodies, but her soul is still within them. Back to Satan, he chases down Asmodeus down the street to reclaim his daughter's body, but Asmodeus takes an officer's gun and attempts to shoot Chrissy in the head. However, Satan begs him to calm down, as this is between him and Asmodeus and not about Chrissy. Satan apologizes for the mistake of fabricating a fake contract for Asmodeus. He acknowledges the sacrifice 
sacrifices Asmodeus has made, even for his own family. Wait, did he say family? However, Asmodeus falls for Satan's comfort, and Satan knocks out Asmodeus's soul into a cube, killing him instantly. Laura is now being burned alive by the people who believe she is evil. Yet, Laura really wants to smash all of them, but as her daughter's soul is still in there, she calms herself down and tries every method to bring Chrissy's soul back. When she sees the mayor wetting his pants, she begins to say pee pee poo poo to wake Chrissy's soul up. Suddenly, it works, and Chrissy's soul comes out from the bodies, forming into one strong soul again and eventually returning into her body. In the following days, Laura tortures a goblin who comes from another realm known as the Plorable Realm. She is curious about what he is doing here, but when he is about to tell her, they are interrupted by Darlene, who wants Laura to go to the club with her. Laura doesn't want to hang out, but Darlene won't shut her mouth, which annoys Laura so much and causes her to choose to go with Darlene. After they have just arrived in a minute, Laura arranges to return back home as she can't stay any longer, which will lead her to kill someone. Suddenly, Laura is approached by a suited man who introduces himself as a social observer. However, no one could lie to Laura as she is capable of reading people, and she knows he is a serial killer. Laura even knows if there is poison in her drink, and she always has an antidote with her as well. In the metaphysical realm, Satan brings Chrissy to the theater to watch a show, but Chrissy immediately gets bored and sets out to return back to Earth. Satan then stops her as he has planned so many things to do with her today. Meanwhile, Laura allows herself to be tied up by the man and plays a little game with him. Suddenly, the man takes out his knife to scratch Laura's neck, but he is immediately killed by Darlene, who thinks Laura is in danger. Laura blames Darlene for killing him, even though she isn't in trouble, she was just playing along to get something she needs. Laura then opens the portal to the corner of the earth to get the man's corpse inside to clean up the mess and orders Darlene to guard the portal for a bit. However, Laura suddenly sees Darlene also coming with her and bursts in anger because if the portal touches the liquid, it will be closed. Unfortunately, a drunk guy comes out to pee on the portal, causing it to close immediately. Back to Satan, he brings Chrissy to a tiny realm that is in the metaphysical realm known as Wibbytickle Realm. They enter the building and get farted on by a woman to change their outfits. Later, Chrissy realizes her dad brought her to kill monsters or be killed by the monsters, and the first monster they face will be the most powerful creature from all corners of the realms. However, going into a death match together is not what Chrissy wants to be bonded with her dad, but Satan comforts her, saying it will be fun and ceases her worry as she is now with him, who is the most powerful being in all realms. But then he pushes her to confront the monster alone, leading her to cuss him as a coward. Suddenly, Chrissy shoots magic from her hands, causing the monster to collapse, and she is shocked by her power. Together, they kill the monster right away. However, they have 23 more monsters to destroy. Meanwhile, Laura brings Darlene to stay with Jimmy, whom she used to torture for a while, as she needs to find 5 milligrams of goofer dust to create a portal back to Earth and orders Darlene not to say anything to him. Back to the contest, Chrissy and Satan have only one monster left, and the Spider Queen allows the audience to choose the exterminators for the competitors to face. Suddenly, one of her kind chooses Man and Angle, who is the strongest of all monsters, as he wants to see Satan face a serious challenge. Later, the monster begins to attack Satan and manages to scratch his body. As Chrissy sees her dad in danger, she quits playing around and uses her power to explode the monster. The Queen Spider then confronts Satan, as she knows something is wrong since the show began. The Satan she knew could slay a thousand enemies while taking his poop and shows the wound of Satan, which he received from the monster. The Queen Spider reveals that Satan has been losing his power for a long time now, and the only way to reclaim his power is through Chrissy. Satan tries to convince Chrissy that the Queen Spider is lying. However, the Queen Spider lets him prove if he still has his power, he must beat her and trap Chrissy in the bubble. The Queen Spider then releases a million spiders from her Mickey Mouse to face Satan. Meanwhile, when Darlene is alone with Jimmy, she compliments him on how gentle he is. Suddenly, Jimmy grows a hundred times bigger, attempting to turn Darlene and Laura into his food. Laura has already told Darlene not to talk because ego monsters like Jimmy are triggered by compliments. However, upon knowing the truth, Chrissy has lost her trust in her dad, but Satan tries to explain that when Chrissy was born, part of himself transferred to her, which caused him to lose power. But the reason he trains Chrissy to be powerful is for her to take care of him and Laura. Back with Laura, she tells Darlene to kill Jimmy's confidence in order to turn him back into Tiny. But Darlene doesn't know how to be toxic, so Laura decides to teach her, and as Darlene begins to insult him, suddenly it works, leading her to keep going while Laura tries to escape. Later, Laura throws goofer dust into the air to open the portal, and eventually, they return to Earth. However, Satan is now withered, and upon seeing this, Chrissy's anger level is rising, causing her to blast a power that destroys everyone around except her dad. Satan then returns back to his normal appearance, and he reveals that he just pretended to be
be dead to force Chrissy to reach her full potential. Yet, Chrissy doesn't feel good, and if Satan wants to be her father, he needs to be honest from the start, she says. The following day, Bennigan and Chrissy were passing notes and giggling in class while learning, causing the teacher to believe they were sarcastic towards him. As a result, he punishes Bennigan with extra reading for tonight. Upon seeing this, Chrissy uses her power to control the skeleton and scare the teacher. One of Chrissy's classmates, Arabella, compliments her, saying it is so cool, which makes Chrissy satisfied with what she is doing. After the class ends, Arabella approaches Chrissy and invites her to join the protest against fast fashion with them, and she agrees. However, Chrissy is excited to hang out with Arabella because she is a popular student in school, so Chrissy cancels the plan to get an ice cream with Bennigan, which upsets him. Three days later, Chrissy becomes an emo girl and grows really stubborn towards Laura. She doesn't follow what Laura has told her after befriending Arabella. As Chrissy leaves for school with her friend, Laura is informed by Erwin that Chrissy took her Wiccan tools. Laura then arrives at the mall with a goat and starts chanting a spell to freeze people around and kidnap a young mother. Upon arriving home, she chants another spell to borrow the youth from the lady since she can't allow Chrissy to use the Wiccan tools, which can conjure the darkest evils. She orders Erwin to lock the garage and doesn't allow him to open it, no matter how much she begs. Satan suddenly receives a message from Chrissy, who informs him that she can't meet up that weekend because she has a crazy school project. She notes a grimacing emoji at the end, which really drives Satan mad when he realizes he is being upstaged by a yo-yo kid. Later, Satan, in an armadillo appearance, shows up at Bennigan's house to ask him about his school project with Chrissy. However, Bennigan reveals he hasn't seen Chrissy for days since she became popular. Satan goes insane when he hears this because popular people are a menace to society, and Satan can't allow Chrissy to be popular, which will destroy her life. But Satan believes Chrissy won't listen to him, so he arranges his plan to make Bennigan more popular than Chrissy to bring her back. Meanwhile, Laura becomes a 14-year-old girl and starts to investigate what Chrissy is up to. Soon, Laura sees Chrissy enter the bathroom with her friends, so she follows and finds out Chrissy is now vaping. When they leave, suddenly Laura notices a name on the bathroom wall, which is Slim Tim. Back at Satan's, he controls Bennigan to do what he wants by pulling his hairs, and Satan accuses the hottest teacher that she has banged with Bennigan, leading her to be fired. However, Bennigan pities his teacher, and this is not cool at all, he says. Later, Laura searches who Slim Tim is and discovers he is a slender man who devours young people's hearts. The video continues that acolytes often offer their weakest member in exchange for the slender man's eternal love and admiration, so Laura starts to realize Chrissy's friends are going to sacrifice her. Laura then receives the location of where Chrissy is going to summon the slender man from the boy beside her. While in the hall, Satan asks Bennigan to read his speech he has written, and soon Bennigan finds out Satan wants to cancel his own daughter, but Satan replies it is for Chrissy's own good. Nonetheless, Bennigan doesn't want to read his speech yet Satan threatens to murder his family if he refuses. Back to Chrissy, Arabella begins to summon Slim Tim with Laura's Wiccan tools. It works, and suddenly Slim Tim appears. Upon seeing this, Laura with her knife goes to murder Slim Tim before Arabella and her friends catch a glimpse of him. However, they are surprised when Laura shows up instead of the Slender Man, and Arabella mistakes it for not working and blames Chrissy because of her Wiccan tools. When it's Bennigan's turn to share his speech, he decides to stop being a coward and confront Satan. He isn't going to read the speech and kills Armadillo with a pencil to send Satan back to his realm. However, Slim Tim isn't dead yet, and he shows up attempting to devour Arabella's team. Yet, they are saved by Chrissy, who throws a fireball to push Slim Tim away. Chrissy is then approached by Slim Tim, causing her to suffer an attack from him. Later, Laura shows up to save Chrissy, smashing Slim Tim with an extinguisher. However, mortal tools can't kill him, so Laura yells at Chrissy to use the Wiccan tools. Eventually, Slim Tim explodes and dies. As Laura's youth spells time is up, she quickly rushes back home before Chrissy finds out who she is. After the event, Chrissy becomes normal like she was and also gets an ice cream for Bennigan to apologize for leaving him. The next day, while Laura arrives home from the market, a demon from another realm shows up, wanting Laura to bring her to Chrissy to eat Chrissy's bones for ultimate power. As the demon begins to attack Laura, she immediately throws hot water to burn her skin and knocks her with a grocery bag. Laura then drags the demon to the fridge, crushing her head right away. Soon after, Chrissy shows up from school, informing that she was brought home by Amanda. Amanda also takes Chrissy out to get lunch because Laura didn't show up at school to pick her up. Chrissy compliments Amanda, saying she's a cooler mom than her actual mom, which really makes Laura jealous. At that time, Chrissy prepares to go back to school for the school night, and Amanda volunteers to cover for Laura since she hates that stuff. But Laura doesn't let anyone be greater than her, so she decides to go to school night with Chrissy, and Chrissy begs her mom not to make a scene. However, when Laura arrives to meet Amanda and the other mom, Laura suddenly gets into an 
argument with all of them and smashes a mascot, which embarrasses Chrissy. Meanwhile, Satan comes to Earth to join one of his friend Baca's bachelor parties, where they murder dumb humans just for fun. Back at home, Chrissy is mad at her mother and wants Laura to apologize to Amanda for what she has done, but she refuses and swears she will prove to Chrissy that she is a better mom than everyone else. Laura then brings out her anger leeches. Instead of blood, they suck out rage, and Laura plans to use these leeches to beat those moms at their own game. Later, Chrissy is surprised to see her mom's behavior is different from the previous night, and Laura invites Amanda and the other moms over to apologize. Satan and his friends then begin their parties to murder humans. However, Satan doesn't enjoy doing this anymore and chooses to secretly save humans from his friends, hiding them in the back of his car. Soon, his friends discover that Satan has hidden humans from them and believes Satan has gone soft. Baca reveals that he hangs out with Satan all these years because Satan is their meal ticket, not because they like him. Now that their meal ticket has expired, they decide to get rid of Satan and immediately attempt to go three on one. However, Satan's snake friend devours Baca alive, giving Satan the opportunity to possess and kill them all. Not long after, Chrissy finds out that her mother is covered up by leeches and hurries to tell Amanda and the others to leave. But soon, Laura shows up with leeches as her dress, and everyone is grossed out. However, Chrissy doesn't want to see her mother in this state and asks Laura to return back to normal. She compliments Laura, saying she is better than any of those terrible moms. Upon seeing the leeches fall down from Laura and crawl to Amanda when she shows her anger, Chrissy begins to get into an argument with Amanda to get rid of the leeches from Laura. Soon after, all the leeches have fallen off and Chrissy uses her power to destroy them. But as there are too many, Laura immediately regains her consciousness and quickly utilizes her spell to blast off all the leeches. In the metaphysical realm, Satan suddenly becomes emotional when his snake chooses to help him after Satan has treated him like garbage all these years. But it is because they are friends, the snake says. The following night, Bennigan invites Chrissy to have dinner with his family. As Bennigan eats too much, suddenly the reflection of himself in the fork insults him, calling him a fat boy and saying Chrissy doesn't want a boy with a paunch like that. However, Chrissy believes something is wrong with Bennigan, and that night she decides to possess a lizard in Bennigan's room to investigate him. She sees Bennigan painting a picture of himself as a pig, which really shocks Chrissy, so she plans to help him. Later, Chrissy goes to the metaphysical realm to inform the snake about wanting to help her friend and asks to see her dad. In Satan's room, he is upset when his dog is sick, and soon the snake reports to him that his daughter is here to ask about a personal issue. However, Satan isn't in the mood right now and lets the snake tell her to go to his study room, as she will find what she needs there. As she arrives, she orders the machine to search for the book on how to change the way someone thinks about themselves. After she reads that book, she goes to see Bennigan at his house. According to the book, first, she has to square her hips to establish dominance. Second, Chrissy begins to rapidly burp Bennigan's name three times, then she stares into his eyes and yells, mind mess them up. Next, she recites a mantra to Bennigan so that he will see beauty in everything. While Laura is flossing her teeth, suddenly Satan shows up to inform her that their dog Woofalo is slowly dying, and he wants Laura to see Woofalo one last time. At school, Bennigan now sees everything in a good way, and Chrissy follows his tail to make sure he is okay. As Bennigan goes to the bathroom after having lunch, Chrissy possesses a rat to investigate him and is shocked when she sees Bennigan talking to his evil self who always insults Bennigan when he eats too much. As Laura teleports to see her dog, Satan lets Laura get ready to go to the Al Wepwawet, where all dog souls come into being. If they are on the beaches of Wepwawet when they die, their soul particles get recycled into new dog souls on Earth. Soon, they arrive at Al Wepwawet, which is a really beautiful place, and some dogs grow wings flying around just like birds. Satan reminds Laura that this is the place where they beat the hell out of somebody together for the first time, but not long after, they get into an argument and start wrestling each other. Meanwhile, Chrissy has discovered a new method to help Bennigan from her dad's book. She goes to see Bennigan, rapidly burps his name three times, and begins to use her magic to make Bennigan jack. Later that night, Chrissy brings Bennigan to the arcade to have fun together. But as Bennigan is now stronger than before, he breaks every game he plays. When Bennigan goes to the bathroom, suddenly his stomach begins to hurt, and he soon realizes there is a demon mouth in the middle of his belly that absorbs everything and causes him to grow bigger into Hulk discount. However, Chrissy then discovers that this is because of the magic she used on him. Soon, Bennigan loses control and starts wreaking havoc all over the place. When Chrissy reveals it is her fault that caused him to become like this, Bennigan mistakenly thinks Chrissy also believes he is a fat boy, and that's why she changed him from who he was. However, Satan and Laura have brought Woofalo to his tomb, and Woofalo's soul becomes a star, shining for a bit and exploding, creating water drops that fall down all over the place. Back at the arcade, the only way to stop the corruption is for another subject to absorb the matter themselves.
themselves, according to Satan's book. So Chrissy decides to absorb the power from Bennigan into herself, causing her to look disgusting. Later, Chrissy goes to meet her dad for him to help her, and Satan turns Chrissy back to normal with just one snap. Chrissy then apologizes to Bennigan for what she has done to him, and Bennigan doesn't mind because they are best friends. However, it is revealed that Satan still keeps the photo of young Laura with Woofalo in a safety box, even after Laura kidnapped Chrissy from him, and this proves how much Satan loves her. A few days later, Satan brings Chrissy to Spain to watch bullfights, which disappoints Chrissy as she thought he brought her to eat tapas. Suddenly, a man gets stabbed by the bull, and Satan offers him the opportunity to live his dream life after he dies, for eternity under Satan's care. All he has to do is sell his soul. The man agrees and spits on Satan's contract, which immediately absorbs his soul into it. However, Chrissy is curious about where a man's soul goes and wants Satan to show her a man's eternity under Satan's care. So Satan summons the entrance to his place known as the soul hole for Chrissy to see. In the soul hole, there are many blocks floating, acting as the houses of every soul who chooses to be under Satan's care. Meanwhile, Laura asks Darlene to stay for the night because she caught Erwin hoarding anger leeches for his substitute teaching gig. So, Laura sets off a bug bomb to prevent another infestation. However, Darlene hesitates at first to let Laura in, as she seems to have something secret that she doesn't want Laura to know. Anyway, Darlene still lets Laura stay but locks her in the room and forces her to sleep at 8 p.m. Laura then breaks the door and goes to find a bottle of wine to drink but is amazed to see that Darlene's house looks a lot bigger on the inside, just like Avi's house. Suddenly, a ghost appears behind Laura, causing her to throw a bottle at him. Later, it is revealed that he is Darlene's husband, Gus. Back at Satan, he brings Chrissy to see his newbie souls that have just arrived at the port. However, Satan doesn't see any of his souls stepping out from the boat. He finds out that his beast guard, Marv, has taken his souls to sell them in Biggleheim, which is the hub of the soul trade. In Biggleheim, corporate con artists trick souls into eternal suffering by offering roller coaster rides and branded swag. Upon realizing this, Satan has to get back his souls in time before it's too late. As Laura sees Gus acting abnormally, she is curious about how long he has been like that. However, Laura is shocked to hear Darlene mention that Gus has been in that state for months. Ghosts can only stay on the corporeal plane for so long before they turn into wraiths, vengeful spirits who hunt the living and feed off misery. But Darlene says Gus couldn't hurt a fly. Thus, Darlene is being asked to show her most precious memories from a relationship. Eventually, Satan and Chrissy arrive at Biggleheim and disguise themselves as pretzel sellers to sneak in because Satan is the rebel of this industry and is banned from entering. However, Chrissy is impressed when angels start to perform a show, expressing this as an afterlife where souls actually want to spend eternity. Soon, Satan catches a glimpse of Marv and immediately attempts to follow him, but he realizes Chrissy has already disappeared somewhere. Meanwhile, Darlene brings her precious memories for Laura to see, revealing there are many huge artificial eggplants, and unfinished business is the reason Gus can't go to the afterlife. Laura says unfinished business is Darlene, and they need to cut all ties between Gus and her so that Gus can cross over. Later, Satan finds Chrissy with the thumb guy, and Chrissy wants to sign up for her afterlife in his realm because she sees it as a cool place with a giant projector for every soul to watch movies. Chrissy wants Satan to take some tips from the thumb guy to improve his soul whole, but they both start to get into an argument. Satan decides to leave her alone and realizes that Chrissy's behavior is just like her mother's, and now he has to deal with two of them. Not long after, Satan comes across his souls, and as he sees Marv there as well, he quickly rushes to choke him. However, this is just a trap to lure Satan out by the angels, but as soon as Satan uses his power to burn Marv, he enters his god mode. While Chrissy enjoys her time alone in Biggleheim, she suddenly gets a message from the thumb guy, who invites her to his thumb realm. Yet she can't enter a boat to travel to the thumb realm as she is still alive and is forced to take her soul out and keep her body in Biggleheim. When she arrives, the thumb guy brings her to see the great thumb, which measures their love and thumbness. The thumb guy orders one of his people to go measure his love and thumbness and asks him a question about how thumbness helps him in his day-to-day -day life. However, the great thumb sees through the man's lie when he uses pleasant words in his answer, and he is immediately crushed by the great thumb. Upon seeing this cruel action of the thumb guy, Chrissy kicks him and he lands under the great thumb, getting crushed and dying instantly. Back to Laura, she prepares to trap Gus in the Dybbuk box that will contain him forever. She begins chanting a spell, and the box absorbs him into it, but Darlene can't bring herself to watch Gus leave, causing her to kick the box and release Gus in his wraith form. As the light goes off, Laura gets a torch to find Darlene and soon comes across her possessed by Gus. Soon Gus shows up behind Laura, attempting to attack her, yet she continues chanting to clear him away and get Darlene to hide in the bathroom. In that urgent moment, Darlene confesses she is not Gus's unfinished business. She reveals they started a business together and wanted to succeed as a team, even if
if it was just selling Darlene's used underwear online. However, nothing sold, and Gus will leave when his actual business is completed. Laura realizes there might be a guy who wants to buy Darlene's dirty underwear, so she contacts Erwin to buy Darlene's underwear immediately. When Gus breaks into the bathroom, Laura shows him a receipt of the underwear, which suddenly leads him to return back to normal. Gus is excited to see this, so he and Darlene say goodbye to each other one last time before Gus goes to the afterlife. Satan is now pinned down by the angel's chain, and Chrissy also arrives there to watch their beef. Chrissy is shocked when she hears that her dad was kicked out from hell by the angels because Satan has a daughter with powerful magic. Suddenly, Chrissy begins her attack on the angels, and the battle rages. But as Chrissy is struck by lightning, Satan releases his anger and turns into a huge soul demon, destroying every one of Bigelheim's army, causing the angels to retreat and swear to come back to take on Satan next time. However, Chrissy is curious about what the angels said about Satan and whether it was true. Satan reveals it is true, and that's why everyone thinks he is a loser. The following day, as Laura prepares dinner for Chrissy, she sees a dirty dish left in the sink and gets mad at Chrissy. However, Chrissy says it is not her dish and accuses Laura of using her dish, which leads to an argument as always and even escalates to them using their power against each other. Chrissy summons an army of roaches to be on her side, and Laura summons an army of rats to stand up with Chrissy. The roaches and rats from all over the city come to Laura's house and attract the neighbors to watch their mother-daughter fights. Bennigan also arrives to see what's happening, and Darlene arranges a plan with Bennigan to stop Laura and Chrissy before things go further insane. In Chrissy's room, she gives a motivational speech to her roach army, and the Lieutenant Roach complains about their bond with the rats, as they have no beef with each other. But the General tells him to forget their relationship and do what Chrissy has ordered. The Lieutenant kisses his wife goodbye and gets ready for war. Meanwhile, Laura sets up her plan and house map to take over Chrissy. Darlene and Bennigan prepare to turn on the speaker to get Laura and Chrissy's attention. At the same time, Satan also arrives since he was reported to come here to help stop the war by Darlene. Satan then possesses a roach and asks Erwin to tell him where he can find the worst thing about Laura, something that will make Chrissy go nuts. Satan threatens to crawl into Erwin's brain and rewire it, making every time Erwin touches his butthole feel like he is covered in lava if Erwin chooses not to tell him. However, the mayor tries to calm Laura and Chrissy down and convince them to stop the war, yet the mayor is getting roasted for interfering. Later, Satan gets the roach army ready to obtain a heavily guarded weapon of mass emotional destruction. The roaches then go under Laura's bed and retrieve the box secretly hidden under the wood, which reveals itself to be Laura's diary. The roaches bring the diary to Chrissy. Soon Chrissy confronts Laura about the diary, as she has discovered that Laura wanted to get rid of her when she was young by using the posturum spell to reverse time, because Laura was struggling during that time. As Laura admits the truth, Chrissy bursts into rage and begins to attack Laura. The war between the rats and roaches also kicks off. However, Lieutenant Roach is overwhelmed by the rat army, but he proves to be a strong roach and eliminates every one of them. Nonetheless, Chrissy is really going nuts on her mom, and Laura apologizes for what she has done, trying to calm Chrissy down. Laura explains everything to make her understand, but Chrissy no longer listens to Laura and uses her power to solve the problem. Upon seeing Laura sobbing while trying to apologize to her, Chrissy calms down and calls off the war. Due to Chrissy wreaking havoc in their house, it suddenly collapses. Chrissy is embarrassed by her actions toward Laura, so she decides to go to her dad for a bit. Later, Laura and Chrissy are spending time on vacation together. Unfortunately, a tsunami occurs and causes Chrissy to be swept away, but Satan shows up with a jet ski to save Chrissy in time. However, this is just Laura's nightmare, and she arranges to retrieve Chrissy from Satan. Laura then contacts Darlene, informing her that she can't let Chrissy stay with Satan and asks if there is a chicken farm nearby so that she can use a spell to enter the metaphysical realm. Now, Laura is staying at Darlene's beach house since her house has collapsed, but Darlene suggests to Laura she better not go to see Chrissy right now or even call her, since Chrissy said she needs space. Darlene advises Laura to respect Chrissy's boundaries or else Laura could lose her daughter forever. Thus, Laura chants a spell to prevent herself from contacting Chrissy for 24 hours. As Laura walks out onto the balcony, she suddenly catches a glimpse of a demon eating a human, but she is interrupted by Darlene's sister, Dorlene. However, Chrissy is having fun flying on a cockatrice around the realm. Chrissy expresses her feelings to Satan, saying she has never felt this alive. Satan suggests Chrissy should explore the whole realm since she has been spending too much time in her boring life on Earth. Satan hands over the remote to Chrissy in case she gets lost, and if she pushes the button, Satan will appear right there. Later, Laura receives a message from Satan, mocking her that Chrissy is loving being in the meta realm. Upon seeing this, Laura decides to reverse the spell. She stabs herself in the hip and yells, Strike on me, Daddy Lightning. Yet she is dragged down into the water by a sea demon. Laura 
Sarah then tries to fight off the demon, but unfortunately, she hits her head with a rock, knocking herself unconscious. The next morning, Laura wakes up to realize the demon is actually a mermaid and that the mermaid didn't harm her. The mermaid is impressed by Laura's fighting skills in the water and returns a photo of Chrissy back to her. However, the mermaid asks Laura if she wants to go underwater with her, and as Laura still has 24 more hours before her spell expires, she agrees. The mermaid licks Laura's neck to give her the ability to breathe underwater and speak. They soon come across sea thugs who are robbing the villagers' nipple jewels, and upon seeing this, they decide to team up and take out every one of them. Back to Chrissy, she takes a quick break at the 9-11 Mart and encounters a fairy girl. As Chrissy asks for suggestions from the girl for fun things to do, the girl suggests that she go to Rapanga, which is the hottest club in this realm. Later, Chrissy arrives at the club and sees the fairy girl there, and she is terrified of the creatures who approach her. Chrissy then goes to find the fairy girl and soon comes across horrifying rooms. Suddenly, the mothman who is with the fairy girl opens the door and asks what Chrissy is looking for and bringing her to see the fairy girl as she requested. However, Chrissy is shocked to find out the fairy girl has been eaten alive by the mothman. Back with Laura, she reveals how bad of a mother she has been to the mermaid, and the mermaid comforts her by admitting she is also a terrible mother, just like Laura. Surprisingly, they both start falling for each other and make out right away. Meanwhile, Chrissy is shot with drugs to weaken her and is attacked by mothmen. Chrissy tries to push the button on her dad's remote to summon him there, but Satan is drunk in the club, causing him to lose attention on the remote. Chrissy hits a moth's ball and tries to escape until she decides to call on her mother, but she is busy with the mermaid, leaving Chrissy on her own. Laura decides to return to the land and finds out that she missed a call from Chrissy. As Laura attempts to reverse the spell to see Chrissy, she is stopped by the mermaid, who encourages Laura to put her guilt aside just once. Laura then prepares to go back to her house and say goodbye to the mermaid. The mermaid draws a tattoo on Laura's arm, informing her if she wants to meet again, Laura just needs to press the tattoo and say her the mermaid's name five times. Back to Chrissy, as she realizes there is alcohol beside her, she pours it on the mothman and creates a fireball to burn them, giving her the opportunity to smash the mothman until he dies. While Chrissy returns to her dad, she gets mad at him for not showing up as he had promised, and Chrissy leaves to see Bennigan once again, thinking that Bennigan may at least still care for her. When she arrives at Bennigan's house, suddenly Bennigan and his family are tied up, and it is revealed the unshaven man has done this to lure Chrissy out and seek revenge on her for what she has done to his balls. The unshaven man then reveals his new weapon, which is a pair of magic gloves, and gains control over Chrissy. As the unshaven man takes out his laser to shoot Chrissy, suddenly a shield appears out of nowhere to protect her, and the man is knocked out by a mystery person. There are three of them, and they later reveal they are Chrissy's siblings. Vanessa explains that Satan has been trying for a long time to produce an heir capable of Maximus Donus, and now he has found it. Vanessa then opens a portal to bring Chrissy to their realm, where all her siblings live before Satan catches their scent. Vanessa also reveals they have been watching Chrissy for a while now and waiting for the right time to make themselves known. Later, Laura and Satan arrive at Bennigan's house after Bennigan informs them about Chrissy. Satan knows his children are hiding out in the far ends of the demi-corp, like a needle in a haystack, and the only way to track them down is through the labyrinth of the Sturcus Urino. It will reveal any truth if they can reach the center, including where to find Chrissy. But they're going to need a soul to sacrifice when they reach the center of the maze, so they take the unshaven man with them. Chrissy arrives at the realm of Primum Flatus, where her siblings all live together, and Vanessa introduces everyone to Chrissy. Suddenly, creatures attack the village, and they rush to stop the creatures on their way. Vanessa advises Chrissy not to kill the creatures because their most important rule is not to kill here. In the battle, they use their magic to trap the creatures in one place and chant for them to return home. However, one of the creatures overcomes the magic, so everyone decides to use their chains to pin it down. But the creature proves to be too strong, causing the chains to break and rush toward Vanessa to kill her. Fortunately, Vanessa is saved by Chrissy, who uses her power mixed with the chain to stop the creature, something that no one else has ever done before. Thus, everyone cheers for Chrissy for her accomplishment. Soon after, Satan and Laura arrive at the labyrinth but find they can't use weapons and magic inside. At the entrance, they encounter the spirit of the labyrinth, Ludwan. Suddenly, they are chased by Ludwan, but Laura tricks it into blasting and breaking a wall, enabling them to escape from the labyrinth. Later that night, Chrissy and her siblings celebrate their victory, and one of Chrissy's siblings gives her a wooden doll of herself. Three weeks pass, and Vanessa studies the creature and discovers that rehabilitation is possible. She arranges to use the Divine Bond Motherlode to gather all the creatures for rehabilitation and put an end to their war. However, Chrissy is a bit worried about summoning the creatures to their village as it might be dangerous. As for Satan, he plans a way to reach the center of the labyrinth while avoiding encounters with Ludwan.
one. Nonetheless, Satan becomes sick of the unshaven man chewing nuts with his mouth open. But soon, Laura realizes those are Labanda nuts, which give off their scent to Ludwan, and immediately Ludwan appears, causing them to flee again. They then arrive at a dead end and fall off a cliff, but luckily, they hold on tightly to Laura. As they believe their lives are about to end in a matter of minutes, they take this time to reveal everything about themselves to each other and let go. However, they begin to float back up, and this is because they have revealed the truth to Ludwan, and Ludwan decides to reveal the passage to the center of the labyrinth to them. In the village, Chrissy uses her power to activate the weapon and starts summoning the creatures. However, there are too many of them, which leads the creatures to break into the village. As Chrissy sees the village being attacked, she decides to violate the rule and kill the creatures. Vanessa tries to stop Chrissy from killing, but Chrissy can't stand to see her siblings attacked by the creatures. Suddenly, she hits one of her siblings, who takes the magic for the creature to prevent Chrissy from killing it, leading to his death. Chrissy is blamed by everyone and is expelled from the realm. Meanwhile, Satan and Laura arrive at the center and realize that Chrissy has already returned home, and they don't need to sacrifice the unshaven man either. However, Bennigan is summoned to meet the angel when he chants the wrong spell to find Chrissy. The angel reveals he summoned Bennigan for a specific job, which is to kill Chrissy. Eventually, Chrissy reunites with her parents, but she is still mad at Satan for not coming to save her that day. In the end, the angel convinces Bennigan to finish his job on Chrissy, and this concludes the series. You can watch more videos like this by clicking on the middle and I'll see you in the next video.